Just as pirates themselves are notorious for their achievements and crimes, sometimes the ships they sailed on can be revered in the annals of history too. This has happened multiple times across the golden age of piracy, and typically you find that the most famous ships belong to the most famous captains. Examples throughout history include vessels such as the Queen Anne's Revenge, the Fancy, the Adventure Galley, the Neptune, and the Wider. But today we're homing in on one ship in particular. The ship that is the subject of today's video is the Royal Fortune, a vessel thought to be the largest of all pirate ships. It was owned by the notorious Bartholomew Black Bart Roberts, who was in turn perhaps the most successful and wealthy pirate captain of the entire golden age of piracy. This truly was a monster of a vessel, whose name was held both in a manner of fear and respect across the Caribbean around the times it was under Black Bart's control. Join us then as we take a trip through history to take a look at the mighty vessel that was the Royal Fortune, the largest pirate ship ever to sail the seven seas. The Royal Fortune's Captain Before we take a look at the ship itself, let's take a look at who commandeered it. The notorious and successful Bartholomew Roberts, also known by his pirate moniker of Black Bart. Born in Pembrokeshire in Wales, 1682, Black Bart was the son of a man named George Roberts. Early records of him are sketchy at best, as is usually the case with most pirates, who often endeavoured to keep their names out of the reaches of the law. It is thought that he first set sail, presumably as a passenger on board a ship bound for the Americas, not a pirate, in 1695 at the age of 13. He was then unheard of until 1718, when his name pops up in the historical record once more, when he joined a crew on a merchant ship bound for Barbados. Black Bart's rise to piracy was one of chance, when the slave ship he was working on in 1719 was overrun by the pirate Howell Davis and his crew. Davis overpowered the crew on board the ship and captured it for his own. Black Bart is actually thought to have been forced to become a pirate by Davis himself, who then signed up with his captors. This was a pivotal moment in the life of Black Bart, who from here on out, would sail the seas with marauders and looters, establishing himself as a skilled and feared pirate. From here, Black Bart was quick to embrace the pirate's life. He rose through the ranks to eventually become a captain in his own right when he was elected following the death of Howell Davis. Bart's first act of piracy was one of revenge. He took his crew to Principe, the location of Howell's death, and slaughtered a large number of men, taking their loot and sailing off into the night. It was late that same year when Black Bart first encountered the ship that would become known as the Royal Fortune. Aboard a captured slave ship, Bart and his crew spotted a French brigantine not too far from the coastal waters of Newfoundland. He and his crew were quick to overpower the vessel, and it came under his command with ease. We'll go on to more details about the actual ship in the next section, but the Royal Fortune became his flagship for many of his forthcoming raids and attacks, serving him well in the time he commandeered it. The attacks in question were numerous and widespread. Black Bart is known for his pirate activity not only in Newfoundland, but also in waters across the Caribbean and even the western coasts of Africa. He captured a slew of ships, many of which were subsequently named the Royal Fortune, and became one of the most notorious, and likely the most successful, pirate of the entire Golden Age in the process. Throughout his career, Black Bart established an effective pirate code of laws on board his ship. They were tough, yet fair, preventing pirates from getting too carried away with their crimes, and ensuring that the whole crew was able to be as successful as possible. He designed and flew striking and intimidating flags, one of which depicted a skeleton holding an hourglass, perhaps to signify that time was running out for his unfortunate adversaries. He was renowned for his bold and fearsome personality, courageously leading the charge in numerous successful raids. Some of these raids even took place on solid ground, as Black Bart and his crew stormed coastal settlements to relieve them of their treasures and valuables, selling it on to amass a colossal financial empire for himself across the course of his career. Many pirates, Black Bart included, lived dangerous and ultimately short lives, however. The captain met his end in battle at the hands of Captain Chaloner Ogle, who arrived in the waters of Cape Lopez in the February of 1722, aboard the HMS Swallow, a colossal 50-gun Royal Navy ship. It was a bloody affair that may have lasted several days, as Black Bart and the Swallow made contact more than once, with multiple pirates losing both their lives and their limbs to cannon fire. After a few days of fleeting contact, Black Bart himself was finally killed by a grape shot wound to the neck, which killed him as he stood on board the deck, orchestrating his pirates to attack the Swallow. Following the battle, Black Bart was wrapped in his ship's sail along with his finest gear, both arms, clothes, and valuables, and was thrown into the Atlantic Ocean, never to be found again. 
This shocked the maritime world, as some sailors even believed that the mighty pirate captain was immune to death itself. The Royal Fortune A pirate captain is worth very little without an impressive and imposing flagship, and Black Bart boasted the best of the best, the Royal Fortune. Historical accounts vary as to what exactly the ship looked like and was equipped with, but generally it is accepted that the Royal Fortune was the biggest pirate ship of the entire Golden Age of Piracy. It was a brigantine, similar in size to a frigate, and could have weighed up to 400 tons as it patrolled the high seas. Upon capturing it, Black Bart had it fitted with 26 cannons, each of them more than capable of tearing a massive hole in the side of an enemy ship. Brigantines are known for their exceptional maneuverability, able to weave in and out of enemy ships whilst in a tight spot. The Royal Fortune would have been no exception, and it is the speed and agility, despite its size, of the Royal Fortune that would have helped its fearsome captain earn such a vast expanse of wealth. The 24 cannons on board the Royal Fortune was eventually upgraded to an astounding 42, and the ship was capable of housing a crew of 150 pirates. These pirates on board the Royal Fortune would have sailed as far south as Brazil and as far north as Newfoundland in Canada. It's important to note that the ship we have described as the Royal Fortune was not the only ship going by that name that was owned by Black Bart. The fearsome captain had a tendency to name many of his ships the Royal Fortune, and the largest of these was the former French brigantine captured in 1719. Many of these ships would be abandoned later on down the line, but this French vessel, his flagship for the majority of his career, would see him well on the waters of the Atlantic across his ephemeral pirate's life. The Fate of the Royal Fortune The Royal Fortune was directly involved in the final battle against Chaloner Ogle, as he sailed aboard the British naval vessel HMS Swallow to deliver Black Bart his doom. The battle took place off the coastline of what is today the West African nation of Gabon, specifically at a section of coastline known as Cape Lopez. Ogle was cunning in his approach to the battle, disguising himself as a merchant ship so that the pirates would not be on their guard. Along with the Royal Fortune, Black Bart also commandeered two other ships in his last stand, the Ranger and the Little Ranger. The fighting took place over the course of roughly five days, and the two sides of the battle exchanged fire fleetingly across this time. There is very little doubt that during this fighting, the Royal Fortune would have sustained severe damage, as cannon fire rounds were launched into its flanks, smashing through the exterior and killing multiple pirates within. Although the Royal Fortune was able to fire its fair share of cannon rounds during the fight, it was ultimately overpowered by Ogle and the HMS Swallow, and eventually, two hours after Black Bart himself had been killed, the ship's mainmast cracked and snapped, and the ship was rendered useless. It is thought that in this time, John Phillips, a pirate fighting alongside Black Bart, actually tried to blow up the Royal Fortune to cause as much damage to the British as they could. But this plot failed when he was arrested, along with 272 other pirates who were fighting across Bart's three ships. While some of these men were hanged for their crimes, many of them were freed African slaves, who were tragically sold back into slavery. By the time all of them had been dealt with, few of them escaped the grim consequences of their piratical actions. It is unknown what the British Navy did with the Royal Fortune after it was defeated and captured by the HMS Swallow. The most likely answer to this question is that the Navy took the ship into the nearest port and scrapped it for parts. There is also the chance that they took it to port, repaired it, and repurposed it into a British naval vessel. But we may never know. Nonetheless, with his life lost, his ship in tatters, and his crew at the mercy of the law, Black Bart's amazing pirate empire had come to an end. Outro Black Bart might be long gone, but his legacy lives on in both the historical record and popular media that concerns pirates of the Golden Age. Black Bart and the Royal Fortune are both mentioned in Robert Louis Stevenson's iconic novel Treasure Island, and Black Bart has found himself the subject of many novels and pieces of creative writing in the aftermath of his death. The notorious captain and his ship have been depicted in television shows, films, and even video games across the course of the last several decades, and the Royal Fortune was even minted onto a gold commemorative coin across the continent of Oceania in 2020. It is perhaps the mysteries surrounding Black Bart's life that draw us to look upon him as one of the most intriguing and well-represented pirates in the media and beyond. There is much we don't know about his life, and the mysteries surrounding the whereabouts of his body and the final resting place of the Royal Fortune are fascinating questions to behold. 
Perhaps one day we will know the answers. Thank you so much for watching this video. Please do subscribe to the channel if you want to learn more about pirate history, and I'll see you next week for another video. Have a great week. Cheers.